This is the Riviera 585 SUV having its US launch at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. This is a 20 meter all weather cruiser. It's got three cabins, three bathrooms on the lower deck and a little surprise as well. If you want something that will go through pretty much anything and you can use all year round, this is the sort of boat for you. And we've got a full tour coming up, so let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Before we get into it though, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll never miss another tour like this one. Starting back here at the transom, what's quite important about the design of this boat, this aft section, is the way that the platform connects with the cockpit. They wanted to make these feel like the same area. Of course, this is hydraulic, so it drops down into the water. It's how you carry the tender. You can remove these railings and slot them in here so you have unbridled access into the water. But crucially, when it's up, it's really easy to step inside the cockpit from either side. Symmetrical access, and this is a good, spacious, safe space. And there are a few options here. This boat's got the version where you have a drop-down seat here, but you can have a bait well. You can also have more of a lounge. So that's a seating module with storage underneath for a couple of sea bobs. But this is really set up for fishing, water sports. There's loads of storage. Storage bins either side, storage underneath my feet, big lazarette here fish bin underneath and then hatches either side to access the IPS drives. Over here you have your fish prep station, you've got your chopping board over here, nice deep top loading fridge on this side, there's an ice maker down here and then if you prep them over there you can cook them very easily over here because under this beautifully crafted lid you have a high-end grill, sink, everything you need to, to cook the catch of the day. This is an IPS boat, we're going to go into the technicalities later on, but something to point out down here is that you have, as standard, an IPS joystick on this side. You can option to have one on the starboard side as well, so no matter what type of berth you're coming into, you have joystick control on either side. Practical detailing is the backbone of Riviera design. It's no different on the 585 SUV. For example, you have a deck drain down here, which means if you take a big one over the bow, water floods down there and not into the cockpit. And things like having the diesel fillers here, you've got sight gauges as well with tank levels, so you can see how full the tanks are from on deck rather than having to check the instruments inside the boat. Same here, diesel tank here, you have a sight gauge, so you always know how much fuel you've got in each tank. We've got a side door here and that aligns with the helm station so again great access out from the helm station onto deck down to the cockpit or forward to the foredeck and the foredeck is a really impressive space it's large it's well designed it is absolutely riddled with storage there's storage under here storage under there same over on the other side works really really nicely and i like you've got this little cutaway on this side so you can walk very easily into this seating here and then you have a nice wrap of seating around this side. There's a table that drops in here as well. And actually this just folds out to create some extended seating space. You can flip this over so that it's symmetrical, but if you want a little bit more lounging space, you can flip this over and give you somewhere extra to lie out. I talked about practical detailing, little things all over the place on this thing. They've built up this ridge here. So if you're washing off the anchor as it comes back in, there is an anchor wash built in to the anchor locker dirt and water isn't going to flood the foredeck, it's going to go back out and down through the anchor roller. These are all the seemingly little details that day to day make life on board much easier. Let's head now though to what they call the alfresco deck. This is the novel thing about the deck arrangement on the 585 SUV. This almost mezzanine effect you get with the split cockpit. So this is raised up. This is all comfortably laid out with very plush seating. You've got your table up here, stool that you can move around to make it a bit more comfortable, TV up in the corner. But you can look down over the fishing and the splashing and the water sports that are going on down there. But you can sit up here with a drink and it'll be away from all of that. It works really nicely and you've got a lovely view from up here. You're elevated. View should be great when you're out on the water. But it's a really comfortable space and it's flexible as well. You see we've got this sort of mesh here on this boat. But you can have sort of tougher plastic panels if you want to fully enclose this and air condition it. You open the saloon door and it extends your livable space by about a third. There's an owner on the way the deck areas connect to each other on this boat and in here one way they've tried to achieve that is with this pop-up window so that just fires up a big gas ram 
connects up to the ceiling and then you have that nice unbroken connection between that living space out there and the living space in here. There's a bit of a step up to get in here, but in terms of the social connection, being able to communicate, it's great. Now this immediately feels like a really comfortable liveaboard home from home. Not only in the decor, we've got the gloss walnut here, you can have satin walnut, you can have American oak in satin and gloss as well. It's warm, it's high quality, and it's just incredibly inviting. And this is a very well kitted out galley as well, certainly in terms of cooling space. You've got domestic size fridge freezer over on this side. There's some more cooling space over there. And they must have said the words offshore boat 20 times while we were doing this tour, but they really want to point out that these are boats designed to go to sea. And it comes down to little things like everything is held in place. Nothing should rattle, slide, move, even the Riviera branded glassware has places to go where they're not gonna move an inch, even when you're powering through big waves. The usual array of cooking equipment, very high quality components on this shot, so it's all melee cooking. And if we move around here, we come to the bulk of the scene itself. Interestingly, the TV is down there. It's at floor level, but then it pops up at the touch of a button. So it's a bit higher up if you actually want to watch it. And then obviously this is your main internal dining space. Doesn't look it at the moment because the table hides behind the sofa and it just pops out when you want to use it. But a lot of people like to eat outside, so you don't necessarily want a table here the whole time. It's quite a clever bit of design. And I talk about safety and practical detailing. Just having a really nice big recessed railing in the ceiling is something I really like to see. It means you can steady yourself wherever you are in this saloon, pretty much. Now I mentioned the side door on the side deck. That's where this comes into. So you can come out the helm station onto the side deck pretty easily. It's not gonna provide ventilation because it's behind the helm, but you have also got a window here. So they've thought of that. And talking of ventilation, of course, this being an SUV, sunroof. Not glass, so it's not bringing any natural light, but you can open it up and of course, and you get a great view and proper natural ventilation. Helm station. This is an area I really, really like the look of. As you've just seen, it's very easy to get into these seats. There's enough space between them so that navigator and skipper can move independently. And it's called an SUV. And actually this feels like a road going SUV from up here. You sit high, it's commanding. The seat is so comfortable, fully adjustable and everything just falls to hand. This is all electronically adjustable so I can move closer if I wanted to, but I've got the throttles under my hand, obviously the steering wheel, three big Garmin screens, but you know, rough seas, do you want to be leaning forward and touching them? No, but you've got these wheel controls down here so you can sit back in your seat, switch between the screens and control them with proper buttons. It's IPS 1200 or 1350 on this boat, top speed 35 knots, so it'll get a shift on, cruise at 27 knots for 400 nautical miles, so proper fast cruising range on what is supposed to be a real offshore cruiser. And there are things that Riviera do that just make the user experience so much easier that you, you just don't see from other yards. You've got this little quick reference guide here. There is a full owner's manual. It's like the Bible downstairs where you have every system on here. But for just quick reference stuff, you want to you know, check out the systems. Uh, you know, you've got all of the helm controls here, all labeled so you know what's doing what. And you can have a checklist as well for start procedure, that sort of thing. But it's all really neatly put together. Handy little booklet that you can keep at the helm at all times. Really, really good to see. Let's head downstairs. You have to remember that this is a sub 20 meter boat, but we've got three cabins, three bathrooms, and a little surprise in store down here as well. But we're gonna start in the VIP, right forward here in the bow. It's a great space, not a huge amount of room at the end of the bed, but you have got a nice large private ensuite in here and they've got twin deck hatches overhead. So loads of natural light coming in here. And of course that gives you natural ventilation as well. Storage on both sides, storage underneath the bed. You are not short of storage on this lower deck. And I talk about clever little details. You see how this door just recesses? So it's flush here, really clever stuff. Moving amidships here on the port side, we have a twin cabin. Well, I say a twin cabin, it's a twin at the moment. I'll just move in so you can see the size of this space. But if I rummage around inside this cupboard and find the button, they're on tracks. So that bed slides across, joins this one, and you have a double in an instant. Just really adds to the versatility of a cabin of this style. If we head back out again, on the opposite side is the day head. That is the bathroom that this cabin is going to use in the evening as well. 
And then we head right to midships. We are into the owner's stateroom, passing the private ensuite on the starboard side. On the opposite side, you have a little coffee making area. You can have a fridge down here. There is space for a coffee machine, just meaning, and a kettle, of course, just meaning that you can have a coffee or a cup of tea down here of a morning without having to go up to the galley. And this is a really luxurious cabin. It's spacious, it has a huge bed, and look, it's set nice and high. It's almost set at bedroom height, to be honest. Really comfortable, big TV mount on the wall over there. I keep talking about storage. Take it as a granted, storage is great. Eye level here, loads under here, loads over there, more eye level over there, and a walk-in wardrobe behind me as well. It's a, a really comfortable space, and it feeds into that sort of liverboard feel that you could stay on this boat very comfortably for extended periods. And I mentioned a little surprise, so let's have a look at that now. As I said, behind me is the full walk-in wardrobe, but there's even more because here, aft of the bed between the engine room and the cabin, you have this extra crew space, utility area. It's quite flexible. It's a decent space as well. You can see the headroom in here, absolutely no problem to stand up in here. At the moment, this is specced out with a berth, so you have a single berth here. It's a small boat to be crewed, but hey, there's no harm in having an extra berth, certainly for little ones on a boat of this size. You've got washer and dryer down here, and if you want it just specced out as a utility space, you can do that with more storage. There's a bathroom over there as it is, but that could just be like a laundry sink. It's quite a flexible area. If you want to deck it out with racks for fishing gear, that sort of stuff, they'll do that as well. But how do you get all that stuff on deck, I hear you say? Well, through this door here, we have the engine room, and through there, you have a hatch straight to the cockpit. Let's have a look. I feel I have to say it again. We're on a sub 20 meter boat. Would you look at the size and the scale of this engine room? I'm standing up here, no problem. Around the engines, it's very easy to move around all sides and get easy access. It dropped down a little bit towards the pods, but you still have very clear access to them. And this hatch above my head, this is access to the alfresco deck. So as I said, if you're storing kit in that area, it's actually pretty easy to get that from here up through this hatch and onto deck. And there's another hatch straight to the cockpit further down the engine room as well. The quality of engineering is outstanding. Insulation, super clean, very, very tidy, you know, doubled up fuel filters so you can switch across if one is blocked. You have auto reeling shore power cables on either side, so it doesn't matter which side you are, you have very easy access to shore power. Things like getting to the air conditioning, that sort of equipment is really easy. It's all basically labeled as well, so you know what everything is. This is generally gonna be an owner run boat, so making that stuff as easy as possible is really important and Riviera certainly has. The last thing to mention is there are a couple of stabilization options. You can have a sea keeper. If you did, that would be mounted down there. This boat's actually got Humphreys stabilizer fins, which work at zero speed, but also effective when the boat is moving at planing speeds. But either option is available, whichever you'd prefer. Thanks very much for watching that tour of the Riviera 585 SUV. If you want to see my tour of the flagship of the range, the 78 motor yacht, we've got that for you up here. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click up here. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jack Haynes, and this is Yacht Buyer.